Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try some winter styles of imagery with the desert stamps, okay? So <clears throat> I tend to think that, you know, the winter styles of imagery um, can work great for uh, desert, you know, sandy styles of, um, I don't know, whatever, depictions of terrain. And that's because if you stamp these out, you know, snowy types of things and a, like a bluish tinge or something like that, indicative of snow, you know, or the colors that you would typically see it stamped in or colored in, um, you can easily just do that in, you know, brown tones or something like that to represent more sand. And plus, um, like a creek like this in, uh, you know, in a desert type of situation, you often see these washes, like dry washes out in those types of uh, areas. So it doesn't have to be like a running stream or a frozen stream in a winter type of situation. It could just be a dry wash in the desert or it could be flowing, you know, maybe there was a, you know, some rain or something like that or flash flood type of thing going on. But let's take it a uh, look and see what it looks like. I'm going to go with the, um, the pre-printed uh, vintage uh, style of paper. And I'm going to use my hybrid ink. Um, I've been really enjoying the use of this. Uh, what is it called? Midnight Total Eclipse Black. That's what it is. The, the Moonlight Night uh, is the, uh, I think the line or something like that. Hybrid ink is a mix of uh, pigment ink and uh, dye-based ink, as far as I know. That's the hybrid uh, aspect of it. Okay, so we have that stamped out like that. Now, you don't have to use the hybrid ink with this type of paper. I just like the kind of the thickness of it, kind of the balance of um, kind of a thick, thicker um, type of ink and the very surface oriented aspect of it, plus a little bit of the dye to for penetration into the surface, okay? I don't know if it's the best of both worlds or what, I, you know, I haven't been using it for too long, but I find that I get a really good impression on top of these pre-printed papers. Um, you know, stays on or something like that would work just fine as well. You know, the stays on ink, you have to clean a little bit more you know, which I do for if I'm using it on foils or something like that. Um, you know, you go in with a solvent ink for something like that. But um, on these types of papers like this too, I, I think you can pretty much use just about anything. You know, you can go with your VersaFine Clay or something like that. That one's an oil base, so, you know, it's going to dry a little bit slower than, uh, you know, an oil dye-based fusion. Okay, so, I mean, I... You know, just, you know, stamp on whatever paper you want here. But I think this uh, type of, um, you know, pre-printed papers are, you know, they're pretty cool to use just because you have kind of your background tones already is kind of established. So I'm just wanting to do a little bit of experiments here. But I thought, you know, instead of just stamping an off white piece of paper and leaving it at that, you can kind of come up with a pretty cool, you know, finished looking piece just by stamping impressions on top of that background like that. You know, or with minimal types of uh, additional applications like coloring or something like that or shading, you know, you can have a really cool looking final piece. Stamping my Ocotillos right here. I always love the looks of uh, Ocotillos out in nature. Actually, I, I, maybe like during the summers or something like that, I don't notice them too much, but I really notice them, of course, like during the spring, you know, when the, uh, they get these green flowers up and down the, uh, I, I don't know what you call it, the branches, the stems, I don't know what you recall it, but then they get these red flowers um, on top that, to me, they look like dragons or something like that. It looks like this, like snout and they're red and very bright and, uh, you know. They look really cool. All right, getting a few impressions in here like that. Okay, they always have a pretty cool, interesting look to them too. It was a diff really difficult design to do too, um, just in terms of trying to capture the spirit of it, but making it interesting from a design standpoint. It's not just drawing the design, it's all about the negative space in here. You know, because we're going to be layering. It's not, this isn't 
you know, photography or something like that, where we have all these different colors, you know, in, in the backgrounds where, you know, we would have to add it ourselves. Um, but you have to get the silhouettes of the, uh, the imagery down pretty well. But also it's not just the design. You have to kind of make it where it's going to be really a, a practical um, type of uh, um, design to use in conjunction with other designs, okay? So that always has to be taken into consideration. You know, you, you, it's not just going to be a design used on its own on a blank piece of paper, although it could be. But, you know, you're going to want to put things to the side of it. So you have to leave kind of space in between. Or if you have something in the back of it, it has to have enough open space in between the branches to show those things in the background. You know, so those little things. And Ocotillo's, you know, it's just like these scraggly little things. I mean, if you put this thing upside down, it would look like some kind of like a jellyfish or something like that, you know. Portuguese man of war or something like that hanging down there. So it's kind of a... It's kind of a weird uh, kind of a design, um, oh, I don't know, element. A little bit different than a lot of the designs that I've done in the past. I, I don't know. I guess they're less, I don't know. I mean, they certainly have a structure to them. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a le less so. <laughs> yeah. Like a pine tree or something like that. You know, where things are, I don't know. It, it seems like things are a little bit more symmetrical, but you have these little scraggly, you know, scraggly little things. And, you know, some of them are really kind of bent and some of them are kind of straighter, the types. You know, when you see them out there. So it was like, okay, well, which way do you want to go with it? All right, so I used a little bit of that sand uh, or a snow pattern in here to add that little back ridge in there, a little pattern like that. I'm going to add a little bit more texturing in there with my um, tiny rocks like this. And that also kind of unifies all of this area in here um, with a common texture. that and one of the things that I need to get in the habit of doing more now is using um, little critters you know um, let's see here I have a bunch of stuff on the new sheet here but um, there's a little scorpion like this I find that I can use more things I don't know to me than I typically would on a, a scene. I usually don't put like multiple animals in something, but I guess these, the creatures that I'm doing here are like smaller than like a dominant eye, you know, catching, you know, mammal or something like that. So, um, you know, if you're out walking around and you see like a, you know, a deer or something like that, so oh my God, there's a deer there, you know, and you quiet down or something like that. but. You know, I don't know, you know, people aren't going to, like, really, you know, spend too much attention or something like that. If you come across, like, oh, my God, there, there's a lizard there. You know, everyone would be quiet. Go, you know, where's the camera? You know, and something like that. So, um, I don't know, maybe you would on the scorpion. But these little kind of um, elements like this, these little critters, you know, a lot of times, you know, they're hard to kind of see out in nature unless they're kind of walking around. They kind of... Um, you know, they're so camouflaged that when I use them in these desert types of uh, scenarios like that, um, just so far I haven't, you know, had a chance to experiment a ton with um, um, all the imagery yet. But just on my, that's my initial kind of uh, observation, you know, multiple animals. You know, no problem. So there's a little horn toad. There's my little scorpion. We got a, you know, the vulture up top there. Um, do I want the desert tortoise in there? <laughs> eh, let's just go for it. Why not? Now this is a little bit much, you know, for this 
you know, tiny, uh, you know, quarter page scene. Yeah, maybe I won't. Yeah, maybe I will. Just put them right here. The desert is alive, you know, it's not just this, you know, wasteland of, uh, you know, absent of uh, creatures, maybe in some areas of, you know, the desert, certainly. Um, but, you know, just about anywhere you go. One time I was, um, we spent the night out in the sand dunes in uh, Death Valley in this one area, and uh, was it that time or, I don't know, maybe we just, no, I think it was. And uh, coming back, then it's like, um, now the areas that we, we were hanging out at night, <clears throat> um, you know, it was re really high on a dune, but when we got in the lower, um, some of the lower dunes, it's like, oh, there's a, like a Sidewinder uh, snake tracks right there. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know they had Sidewinders in, uh, in California. But it looked, you know, pretty distinctive, those types of tracks like that. You know, I haven't seen them in person before, but I've seen, like, signwinders on, uh, like, documentaries and things like that. Okay, just adding in a little bit of uh, extra shading in here just to kind of fill out the piece a little bit more. Get a little sun if you want to in the background, you know, or something like this. But kind of adding these shadows... You know, coming towards us, it makes it so that the you know the source of light is coming from the background. You know the you know things things are being backlit a little bit. So doing something like this too, it kind of anchors the uh, the scene down a little bit more. You know, we're we're shading. Our objects that are in here established in here now. Okay, here looking at this too. If I want to make this little creaky thing a little bit less, you know, water, watery or something like that, I'm going to put these pebbles down here into that water area. You know, it it'll make it look like it's you know really shallow. You know, they have these rocks kind of right in there like that. It, maybe it's like dry if you put like a lot of them like that. It looks like just a dry bed. You know, creek bed or something like that. All right. So anyways, it's like, a, you know, a Ocotillo. Um, have I been saying Sawara? I, I've been getting Sawara's and Ocotillo's kind of mixed up here. I know they are, but I don't know. I just haven't really, haven't been, that, those two kind of words aren't in my, uh, you know, my, uh, whatever, my weekly, uh, my weekly vocab here. But Ocotillo's, if I, if I said Sawaro, sorry about that. So let's use some Sawaro here. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it needed, huh? A little bit of a change in uh, uh, shape, you know? Um, I'm just going to use the top of this one. All right, I got glitter on a bunch of stamps here, but I'm not going to do glitter on this, but we're moving out into glitter, the glitter world with some uh, latest uh, kind of experiments. And th that's really, really a lot of fun. But I think I'm stuck with glitter on my work area for, I don't know, forever now. Okay, that looks better like that. Now, see, to, to me, that looks like a, you know, like a desert terrain that, that I'm used to, you know. You're... Desert floor, it's usually kind of spaced out, you know what I mean? You know, because, you know, these desert types of things have to compete for, um, you know, water resources. And um, 
but it's usually, you know, in areas, it's usually pretty full where there is, you know, desert types of uh, flora. Yeah. So yeah, I like, I like that in there. Those changes of uh, height in there and the, the mixed shapes. Now it's just kind of playing around with one um, set, you know what I mean? You can mix in. Now I don't, I never see Joshua trees with saguaros, but I mean, who cares? You know what I mean? We're, you know, we're doing some kind of representation. It doesn't have to be a literal, you know, location. It's just something like that. It could just be a statement of, you know, desert flora and we're doing it in one thing. But, uh, you know, we have all kinds of other imagery in here, but you can pack, you know, these, uh, images like this pretty well. And maybe that goes down to the, you know, the, uh, this type of um, flora in here where there is a lot of negative space in here. Maybe with pine trees, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's more a little bit more dense, you know, with, you know, kind of a, the object kind of silhouette on the perimeter, but maybe there's more space in between like with this type of imagery like this, I haven't kind of broken it down yet and analyzed it in terms of the usage goes, but see that space on the uh, the interiors like this around images, maybe that allows for more imagery to be used. You know, if you want to, you can make it sparser, certainly. But there's a lot of imagery in this, a lot of impressions. I don't feel it's cluttered or anything like that. You know, to me, it looks pretty, I don't know, there's, I think there's a decent amount of harmony going on in here still. And okay, so I'm looking at this type of thing just as a basic layout too, as opposed to like a final piece. So we have a lot of areas in here, you know, um, if we're doing this on something else, a different type of paper, and we're using more color in here, you can fill this full of like desert um, kind of annual wildflowers or something like that. And I think that would look great in here. And I think that this would be a really just a nice foundation for, you know, other types of little things in there. I want to say sparkly bits, you know, with color or something like that with the paint pens. But in these days, you know, where I'm using glitters or something like that, I don't know if I would use it in here or not. I guess you could, you know, but um, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, uh, first kind of a... I don't know, whatever scene with the new Ocotillos and uh, a couple of the Saguaros in here. And uh, I like what I see. Can't wait to do some more things uh, with these images. It really, uh, I don't know, it, it's really evocative for me and it really brings back a lot of memories. But again, here's those little critters down here. And just like out in nature, they really kind of just blend in with their, you know, that you know, apparent first glance, you know, you know, just kind of looking at over that tortoise and there could be a rock or something like this. And this little tarantula could be, you know, like a little bush or craggly little branch, but then you look closer and so oh, it's a tarantula and, you know, this thing, little horned toad right here, just can just be another one of these little rocks in there, but you look closer and so oh, it's a silhouette of a, uh, you know, horned toad. We used to call them horny toads. Horned lizard, sorry. They don't call it horned toads anymore because they're not toads. I still like the name horny toad, though. Horned lizard, that, I don't know, that sounds always still weird to me. Okay, anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, more experiments and uh, stamp sketches to come.